Hi guys and welcome to Angling For You and you can join me on another Lockdown 2 video. And what are we going to have a look at today? Now, I've been asked quite a few times, we did one in the previous uh, lockdown of what's in my terminal tackle. So I'm going to go through that today, uh, a little bit brief of what I've got, what's in the box, what new additions we've got and what different hooks and all sorts of things like that because I know I get a lot of questions. So what we'll do is we'll flip it round, we'll aim the camera down and give you a good close up and we'll have a little look through my terminal tackle. Hi right, guys, so here we've got my matrix tray. Uh, it's got the individual pull out uh, segments and obviously it's a bit heavier that one with the uh, all the weight in it. Uh, the, the center one stays in there. Now it's a good idea if you can get these kind of dividers for your drawers um, to do it. Uh, most drawers are universal in height and width. So it might be that you have a different make to this, but they might fit in. So it's worth when the tackle shop's opening, maybe taking that drawer with you and seeing if anything will fit in there. But you just gotta make sure it's got to be just flush or just underneath the, he the level of, of this um, section. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to shut your box and that will not be good. So before we go into actually what's in the box, I've got a few little uh, things that uh, have turned up. Um, I've actually got some more QM1 hooks, which we'll talk about when, when we get to uh, on the way. And I've also got some Kaizen um, Guru hooks, which I've never used before actually, but they were on, on offer on eBay, 575 for three packs. So I thought, jackpot, let's have a, have a little go. So they're on the way. As you can see, I, I really do like the ICS and the ICM uh, sort of systems. As you can see, like with all the different sets of feeders, which we'll go into. Uh, it's just really easy system. So I'm going to do um, a bread uh, feeder fishing uh, film and I, uh, Tom wants a little bit of coaching on that. So I'm going to be doing that soon. So I need needed another one of those. So that's why we've, why we've got that. So as you can see, the normal system where you can slide them on and off. Um, obviously take, take off that, push the stem which a lot of you have seen, and the interchange. So now if I want to pick uh, a different style feeder up, I could do, and it'd feed it, it'd go over to a different feeder. Uh, that's what makes them so good. Now, I, I I just have that on all my feeders nowadays. I, I, I don't really change um, from that. Um, that's what I use for most of my fishing, um, and I just think they're fantastic. So I've got a little cage there. This is only a 20 gram uh, it'll interchange. Um, but what I've got along with that is some ICS, uh, this, they're called match cubes, but effectively they're just a bomb. Um, and again, this time of year especially, I do a lot of bomb fishing and even when it gets to the, the better weather, it's still nice to to, uh, to go bomb feeder, uh, fishing. And these are on the very small tubes, but again, they'll interchange with the longer tubes if you want a longer chuck or you want a longer tube in there um, and exactly the same feature with a little bit of a cut into it where it will able to click and slide in and off your line so they're going to go into into this one and we'll uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit but these um in i like i've swapped around with beads and all sorts and everybody will have the favorite i like the inline quick change beads and um, because the little dimple on there goes into the holes which are on the ends of these tubes and that just makes a really t neat and tidy rig and we are going to tie up a rig um, and allow you to see how easy that is and what that looks like so i do have a couple of those i'm just gonna leave them there for a second and we'll come we'll come back to those so we'll have a little look at what i have in regards to um hooks uh, at the moment so as you can see we've got a fair fair few different types some i get sent to try out and some i uh I have old faithfuls and bits and bobs, but the main hooks that I use are Preston hooks. Um, I've started to move on to some Midian Guru uh, over over time, and uh, you know I use different ones for different scenarios. So I'll, I'll get you. I'm just going to roughly sort them into to categories, and they've all got the got their uh, 
pros and cons. Well, not pros and cons because I, I'd, I'd use them for a, a certain use. Okay, so we'll start on one that you'll all heard me talk about, and that's KKMBs. Now, in here, I've got 10s or 12, depending on what... I haven't got any 12s at the moment, but depending on what the, the venue says, you should always check the rules. Um, and they're not a massive 10, and I use those for paste fishing only, and the 18s, 20s, 16s, and 14s would all be potential feeder fishing when I'm tying a knot loss knot rig, so that's when you've got a band or a quick stop, which we've got a few there, um, on to, to try and make a method rig effectively. So we'll just stick those in there. Now, the newer versions of that, not many left in those, is the KKH uh, Bs. And now these are just a, a little bit of a stronger, um, stiffer hook, to be honest. That They've like the step up from the KKMBs. Um, they're the newer version of those and they're just a little bit stronger but I've got a lot of faith in KKMBs and they stay super sharp um, but the KKHBs I've got to try out and I've got a 12 as you see because I use that for paste and a 16 again that would be something I'd try on a method feeder. Now with the KKHBs and the KKMBs I tend to use those on a method feeder um, with pellets um, now or, or um, it, it, anything on a band really. Now if I'm using a corn I like a different style of hook. Now there's no, oh there's a couple left in this Q-curves. So the Q-curve middies and the MCMBs are very similar hooks. Now this is obviously a 14, this is a 16. And I, and I, and I don't really use 14s too much if I'm honest, unless it's um, height of summer and a bigger carp that I'm aiming for rather than um, smaller fish. Now I just like the curve on there, I think with a corn, um, I use them on a quick stop and, and I find that I get less chance of uh, losing the fish and they're just a really nice hook. Still use them with pellet, but that that's what I mainly use them for. So a GPMB, now with those they're a straight shank rather than the curved shanks that you would use on the others, uh, for, which are mainly for hair rigging. This is if I'm doing a corn or a hookable bait. No, I won't, I don't, if I were using maggots, maybe, I were doing a bunch of deads, um, I were hooking a punch, I was um, hooking a corn, but I'm still fishing for carp, not 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 for silvers, because um, it's a still a strong, uh, really strong hook. So that's got a straighter shank, and it allows you to tie that direct with what, a blood knot or whatever um, kind of knot you want to try. Now, you'll have all seen me use these, carp hair riggers, I always use these for fishing shallow with um, single four mil pellets uh, for F1s in the, uh, in, the, in the summer months. Now I use usually use the 18s for that, I've got some 14s here because that'll be maybe if I'm going on locos where they're a bit bigger F1s and I'm using a six mil pellet um, but similar, similar style fishing. Now Guru F1 hooks absolutely love this hook i started using this last year and i absolutely love it a f1 pellet and i know there's a lot of people that use them and uh, it's just a fantastic hook i use this for all my expander fishing i use this for my maggot fishing um it's just a lovely hook really fine uh, wire but really strong and military sharp and this is why i wanted to try the kaisers um out because they were a, a, a really nice looking hook. They were, they were a little, little bit like a KKMB um, hook. Let's throw in these around. So I'm sure everybody's aware of these ones. Uh, QM1s, uh, Guru hooks again. And again, these uh, are a curved hook. So uh, I would use these when I'm using sort of the same as I would as a, um, an MCMB when you're using corn. Um, but they're just equally good on pellet as well. They're just a really decent hook. And I really like and I think all manufacturers should do this. These little sliding cases, I think it's just a really clever idea to get in and out of your hooks. I just think it's a lot better than fanning about with these packets. And we all know when you get one of those that's had a, an or horrible sticker and it's been stuck on back and it's blooming horrible and sticky and tacky. So, horrible. Um, I always have some B911s. Uh, again, a straight shank hook. Um, if I'm fishing, it, it, I use them a lot at Tom's Pond in Otley. When I'm fishing, sort of single maggot, um, these are size 18, single maggot, and sometimes 
um, a very small expander as well or punch that they're, they're a really decent up for punch as well so b911 a lot of uh, a lot of um good confidence in that and i think a lot of things are um confidence now this says um drennan match uh, carp size 18 it's not it's just a gen it's basically a, a a container for different size hooks sometimes i, I cut hooks off um, our rigs have got tangled and what I'll do is I take them off and I put them straight back into that and it's just a, a backup but I, I have used them in the past but n not anymore and again <clears throat> this is when I do a little bit of silver fishing um, and sometimes on on the canals and the natural venues with the micro barb on there and I use that for for fishing with sort of canal venues and caster and maggot pinky all that kind of stuff um, which hopefully will bring some footage this year to so yeah they go in there and I have obviously the inline changing beads they all go in this one so in this one we have a few more hooks but this is where we have sort of the bands and the bits and bobs and i've got a few hooks in here that i don't use as as much in in, in the bottom is some guru uh, extra tight um float beads i've got a few specimen hooks here and, and when i say specimen we're only sort in tight size 10 sometimes if in the very rare occasions we do floating bread and i might want to hook a bread on i do that i always have these they look a bit battered because they normally go on the rivers or the canals with me and these really are just for fishing uh, when i'm on a river and it's nice and quick and easy enough for fishing a maggot feeder um we normally have uh, there's a couple of there look of uh, camasans uh not being 911s and a lot of those are things that i take on natural venues now Quick swivels, they're great if you're doing helicopter rigs or all sorts of um, quick links and easy to change up links. Um, always good to have them in your, in your bag. Um, you might want to attach them to maggot feeders or, or whatever, cage feeders. Just a good little essential to have in your bag. And this is just another, another version of it. There's a quick change and there's a double swivels. Now the double swivels, you slide up. Uh, the quick change you slide up and you and you take your up link off nice and quick and easy and these ones are like like i was saying before for your heli rigs and all sorts of things like that just double ended um, quick and easy <clears throat> silver fish bandits and again just something that i'd use in the colder months when i'm fishing a natural venue and i might want to put four mil pellet on um and just you know make it easier you know and not not taking loads of stuff out of here just take a buck and it's sometimes easier um just a spare ptfe it's one of those things that you just never know um and and it's always good to to have them carried with you like i say you've got the two quick quick change beads they'll stay in there always essential now i've got a selection of uh, different bands now i've got the smallest what for like your four mils and then these medium ones i can squeeze sort of six and eight mils on there and then i've got it says small but they're they're actually quite a lot bigger band if you look actually quite a lot bigger than than uh than the mate than the preston ones are the the drenum ones and they're the small but you can wedge on <clears throat> an eight to ten mil pellet with no problems whatsoever and sometimes i use these when i'm doing banded bread if i were doing floating floating bread or anything like that so they sit in there nice and easy i have my main hooks and this is obviously float rubbers uh, for your pole floats i have all the, the hooks that i use normally they'll sit in this side and then all the attachments and things to tie rigs with and floats sit in this side lines wise you all know i use a gem pro line so i've got gem uh, uh, two different gem pros i'm just waiting on some more um, I've got a little bit of precision, precision power line under there and a bit of Gabalino line. They tend to be thinner lines. These are more uh, for the summer. And I've got some, some thin uh, reflow power, a big fan of reflow power. Um, used it a lot over the years. And there's no 13 and no 15 and no 17 in there. Lots of, lots of faith in that, uh, that line. And again, Guru Engage use that for a few years now that that's quite the heavy stuff the 022 and the 019 that's purely for animal pegs where you you, you need a straight through rig and you, you have to rag them uh, to get them out of uh, snags now super glue always have super glue you never know what you're gonna have to fix if um, a bushing comes out or your, your pole pots disintegrated all sorts of stuff you need super glue i always carry super glue with me wherever i go um Matt gave me this about uh, last year actually and I need to get I'll do that 
it on Benny's in summer, and that's a slow sinking bomb. Um, so we'll we'll leave that for now, and we'll talk about that later on uh, when we uh, when we start doing some fishing with it. These are the uh, the soft splash uh, midi um, pellet wagglers. We'll be using this uh, later on this year at uh, Candy Corner Fisheries to do a little bit of uh, fishing. And like all of you, you've probably got things in here that you've had for quite a while. These are quite personal to me. And my granddad used to use these punches when he uh, fished the canals. Um, so I keep them in there. I do use them very, very, um, very, very limited amounts, but you know, it's nice to have them in there. And, and my, uh, also insulating tape, always have some of that. You never know what you're gonna need um, that for. So that's, that's, that's the main part. And moving on to the end, I'm not gonna bore you with going through absolutely every single thing that's in here, um, but we've got a selection of feeders um, and we're on to pole pots at this end. So uh, I use a lot of the Preston pole pots, it's just something I've fished with. Everyone's got the, the favorites. I've used them for a long time um, and I just, get used to it to be honest um i like these these type you just wrap it over and attach it like so really quick and easy to do like i say i've used them for a long long time and i just have a lot of confidence in them um it's just one of them's one of those things um these ones are the the nippon uh, midi ones they're really good as well i use those uh, sometimes when i'm shallow fishing and we want to drop a, a slop in or something like that and then I've just got some mini versions, which are change the elastics round, like this one, for example, in, in winter, when you want a low feed, um, it, it's just ideal for that kind of fishing. And with, with the ICS, like I was saying, it, it, it's great for, for interchanging. There's all sorts of different sort of feeders um, and bombs that you can put in, in there. All of these work on that same system uh, and I, I have just a, a plethora of those um, along with the maggot feeders and uh, uh, some midi shotgun feeders and I've also got some new ones from midi that I've got behind me which I'll do on a on a session as well. Uh, I, I have, I, have a, I love um, bombs, I have a select, lovely selection of bombs, make sure I've always got some protectors in there for your elastics but loads of different types of bombs so we've obviously got the quick change ones from pressed uh, from preston we've got some normal standard bombs that you tend to use them sometimes and clipping up at distance uh, i've got some nice little guru bombs uh, that are like rock type um got some other ones on a, on a, on a longer swivel um we've got the cube ones which are a smooth one in various different sizes got the little olivet ones you know loads and loads and i think it's it's good to have a selection of stuff. I tend to not take ridiculous amounts. And I know if I were fishing matches often, I'd have loads and loads of different types in there. But touch wood, I don't usually lose lots of my feeders. So, you know, I tend to be all right. So on the back, uh, we've got the uh, Progen slots. I have an eights, a nines, and a tens under there. There's a couple of sets in there, which one is the new set which is the top ones, which are the the uh, steel, the, the sort of iron colour and the bottom ones, which are green. So I can decide if I've got quite a, a, a greeny sort of weedy peg, I could put the green ones on there to disguise them. If not, I've got the grey ones. Um, so I have a few tools, which we'll just get out for you to have a little look at. There's a couple of um, stots as well in there, what I had before few little bits of uh, equipment that are essential I think to have in, in in your box so we'll just get those out so I'm not going to get the plummet out everybody's seen a plummet um always good to have in your box this is a really good one and um, if you're coloring floats out or you're marking things obviously it's permanent markers don't stick it on your white top top kits otherwise you're going to ruin them but I always have a permit marker with me in there if I want to mark stuff down I have a selection of pole of um have pun punches, um, various different sizes. I like to have those for pellets, for bread, all sorts of things like that. They're really good. Um, I'm, and if I'm fishing uh, boilies or anything like that, I'll uh, I'll use a little drill sometimes if I'm gonna put a quick stop through and it needs a, it's a bit firm to get through. And I, I put a little hole for it first. 
um, to do that. And, and again, a little bit of baiting needle. Sometimes um, if you're doing a zig rig or something like that, you, you'll use them. Obviously, banding tool, everybody's got one of those. And again, just a, a normal baiting needle. Always have my disgorges, really important, especially you've got the small fish that decide to swallow the hook. Um, and again, a little pulling through baiting needle um, and, and a uh, quick sop needle, both guru. Uh, sorry, one's ringers, one's Preston actually, I'm lying completely there. Um, but the, they're the floating ones, so if you do drop them in, you're not gonna have a bar lake where uh, sinking to the bottom of the, to the swim. I have a little bit of rig clippers, so if you're tying hooks, um, really quick and easy to uh, nip off really nice and tidily. Um, I always I always carry a knife um, with me just in case any ducks come my way and can stab them. No, I'm only joking. Um, they're just good if you've got a tin to open or meat to cut or anything really. Um, these are, again, a present from my granddad when I first started to nip on old school shots. They just stay in my box because, you know, it's just one of those things I like to keep. Scissors, everybody has. And uh, some forceps. Like I say, I've got my... Um, uh, my uh, discharges that's what I mainly use but the forceps there sometimes if you get a strong hook holding in the muscle of the carp and you just want to wiggle it out sometimes it gives you an helping hand uh, to release that so let's flip back, back onto me and uh, we'll sign her off right guys so it might be a little bit boring to some um, I've only done one because you know I've, I've, been, <laughs> I've had quite a, a, a good 30 40 people asking me the same thing um, and I do refer them to the original one, but I thought there's a few little bits and bobs in there that are new, so why not do uh, another one? So hopefully it's uh, give you a little idea. It'd be nice to, to hear what you, you guys got um, in yours and see what you've got. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's nice to sometimes show what, uh, what's under the hood, in, in a manner of speaking, um, and what we all use on a day-to-day -day basis. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you'll... Uh, be safe and well and uh, you're enjoying this lockdown season and we've got, still got plenty of videos in store we just want this awful weather to stop freezing the ponds because it seems to rain all the time where, and, and when i want to go fishing or oh, it's lovely weather and then when i want to go it, it freezes it's it's a bit of a nightmare this time of year so even though you're on fur, semi semi furlough um we still can't get out all the time so we'll, we'll, we'll do as best especially when i want to get that 1001 out on the bank so yeah thank you very much and hopefully you'll uh, enjoy the, the, some more of these great videos that we've got planned and uh, if you uh, want to join us on the facebook group at angling for you uh, come along and join us with these fantastic members that are all there to to give their advice and opinions on everything fishing really and uh, if you want to put any pictures up or anything like that that's fine or if you just want to put pictures on the instagram angling underscore for you then that's okay as well so until the one the next one guys thanks a lot for watching and tight lines